Hello, everybody. My name is Graham Elwood. You're watching The Political Vigilante. I'm here with get, the host of Get Your News On with Ron, Ron Placone. And we're talking about the uh, what's happening with Israel. Uh, I wanted to discuss this. Several things have happened. First of all, there is discussion that just came out recently uh, within the last couple hours of a ceasefire, um, which really consists of just Israel stopping bombing the shit out of this open air prison in Gaza. Um, Hamas has shot some rockets. Some Israelis have died, but it's literally like 200 some people to 20. It's, it, it, it's preposterous. It's not a conflict when one side is clearly the abuser and the other side is just bare. Like it's, it's, I, I always say this, it's a tweet Lee can't put out last week. He goes, here's a drinking game to play. If you never want to get drunk is every time an American politician says, take a drink. Every time an American politician says Palestine has a right to defend itself. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You'll never hear that. Yeah, um, you won't. So, uh, and, and Ron was just talking about the, and the, the other thing that's going on is again, the typical of American, especially the democratic party is like, Oh, we got to do something. We got to stop the ceasefire, but we're still going to sell Israel $753 million in weapons. Like, um, and you know, the squad tried to vote it down or whatever. And, and I'm glad Rashida Tlaib is, is, you know, really standing firm on this, um, as well. She should, she's the first ever Palestinian person in Congress. Uh, but this is just, this is part of the problem. America can't sit there and go, Oh, we don't know what's going on. Like, no, no, yeah. they're bombing these people in Gaza and killing women and children with American arms that we sell them. And they, really they're buying them with the $3 billion that we give them every year. So it's just like, <laughs> it, it's, it's kind of insane. So I know you've been following this. We all, all of us, uh, you know, lefty and media people have been following this. How do you see this Ron in terms of, and, and what you just said, Laverna, this, uh, this port town in Italy, said we're just not going to handle these weapons, which Livorno. Livorno, thank you. They went around it, they but did. it's still but but that's what it's going to take. Like the the residents, the Palestinians, I think in was it in Jerusalem went on strike? Um they did. Yeah. I, I don't know all the all the details around it or what all was involved there, but yeah, they did go on a, a big strike in Palestine. And I actually just Googled because, um, you know, and, and I haven't seen anything conclusive here, but basically, you know, today was the deadline for anybody like in, in government to, to basically do anything to try to block this weapon cell. Like today was the deadline mm -hmm. because it was introduced on May 5th. You have 15 days to do something about it. So, you know, I mean, they, they, introduce something at the 11th hour and so you know and and i haven't seen anything at least just doing a quick google search here that's saying if it if it went anywhere so i'm, I'm assuming it likely didn't but but yeah i mean they, they basically at the 11th hour uh you know put something out there which in a way is just like well are you just doing this to say that you didn't do nothing uh like is there any chance this will lead to anything and and so and I think the other striking thing worth noting here is that Joe Biden's little theater, which, by the way, a bunch of countries are calling for a ceasefire. Who's not on that list calling for a ceasefire? The United States. Oh, weird. And Joe Biden had his phone call with Netanyahu where he didn't even say we should have a ceasefire. He said, like, let's let's try to get on a path to a ceasefire, whatever the hell that means. Like, like I, I don't know, whatever, like, like you just bomb your way to a ceasefire. I don't know what that means. But, um, you know, let's get on a path to a ceasefire. And uh, it's a bunch of bullshit because he's, he's asking for a path to a ceasefire while simultaneously selling more weapons. But Netanyahu didn't even play along. Netanyahu just said, uh, no, we, we have I, I forget his exact quote, but he basically said, you know, we're going to stay until our aim is is complete, which you're bombing the shit out of Palestinians. You're destroying their homes. You're wrecking their residencies. You're killing journalists. You're killing children. You're killing, um, you're destroying uh, AP buildings. You're, what is your, what is your aim? Who are you, who are you defending your people from? We all know the answer to that. Nobody. Nobody. Israel has all the military might and they have it because we give them $10 million a day 
for it. I mean, it's, I, I will say this though. I, it's been uplifting that I feel like a lot of the um, kind of rhetorical walls that have been put up for both of our lifetimes when it comes to this issue where, Oh, if you, if you criticize the uh, right wing neo-fascist Israeli government, that's anti-Semitism. No, it isn't. Mm -hmm. It's criticizing the right wing fascist Israeli government. And you know, like, Oh, you can't, it's complicated. All, all these little barriers that they put up, those walls are, are being broken down, which is evident when you had 25,000 people show up for Palestinian rights in Los Angeles. And you saw the, um, you know, the Israeli embassy get shut down in Boston with people protesting for Palestine. And you saw people show up in cities all throughout the country. And you saw, you know, I mean, something else that was really powerful. You, you saw so many uh, so many Jewish people standing up and, and saying this is atrocious that this is being done in our name, uh, people in Israel and in the United States. I, I mean, that's really powerful. And and then you see what happens in Livorno, where, where the, the dock workers stand in unity and say, we're not doing this. I mean, you know, sadly, the you know, the the uh, you know, the warmongers keep warmongering. But, you know, the, there are shreds out there to give you a, a little bit of hope in humanity. Yeah, I agree. I agree. More people are, are, are waking up and going, nah, this doesn't work. You can't say, you know, you can't, like you said, like it's not anti-Semite uh, and you're not an anti-Semite. If you say I'm not in favor of a right-wing Israeli government and, you know, and, and, and I'm seeing more like the organizations, uh, like Bet Salim, which is an Israeli human rights group that is highly critical of Netanyahu's government and its treatment of Palestinians. I'm really, that, that gives me hope too, because, and they call out the propaganda of the Israeli media. And because we know this, we're fed a bunch of propaganda here in America yeah. and they are in, is in Israel. They're fed all this propaganda and they're like, no, this is, this is nonsense. There's also another great organization breaking the silence dot com dot IL, which is a bunch of ex Israeli soldiers that are like, nope, it's, we treat them. And they're, they're like confessing to all these awful things they participated in. And the, then the mentality towards the Palestinians, they're like, we're taught that they're just, they're less than they're animals and we can just do what we want. And, um, and all of these sort of broken narratives. Well, if Hamas, you know, they, they keep causing problems. Okay. Yes, Hamas has shot rockets in there. Yes, Israelis have died from, but but come on, it is like twenty to one, the the rate, and 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 that's not. Uh, all these narratives are getting broken. Of like, well, we're just we're you know, and and, and to, I watched this guy from from Bet Salim on Democracy Now, and they showed this clip of Netanyahu going, well, we're just we're just defending ourselves. We're just Netanyahu's like we're just responding. And 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 Amy Goodman says, what do you think of that? He goes, this is just pure propaganda. This is not true. And it's nice to see that within Israel, people saying this, um, because I've met some some you know Israelis or pro-Israeli people, and they they sound they're a little culty. They're a little like you know the the. The ride or die, America's number one types in in this country. Well, yeah, just... exactly. It, it, there's a lot of parallels there between mm -hmm. you know people who are, are you know fine with what the the Israeli government is doing, both both in Israel and here in the United States, and and people who oh the U.S. is a force for good around the world. All the stuff we're doing it, it, is good, and and yeah, and then of course there's anti-war people in the United States and there's, you know, uh, anti-war people in Israel and people opposed to what the, their uh, government is doing. It's yeah. Yeah. It's, oh. it's, and, and the pressure that's being put on, and I think this is, yeah, you know, I know we've talked about this before, but it is one of the upsides of having a guy like Trump in the white ha house. I'm glad he's gone, but he was because he triggered so much, and people on the left and it did wake people up into like participate, especially younger people are like the whole system's broken. Yeah, yeah. Younger people, you know, like to see, you know, like young black women in getting interviewed going, we're not just voting for Kamala. We know who she is. We know how many black people she arrested. Like they're like, uh, uh, okay. Yay. Trump's gone. Now what? Like now we got to hold and Biden's like, well, we're going to find a pathway to this pathway to like you said, pathway to cease fire. How, how does that work? How does, how about just cease fire? How about the word cease fire? That's pretty clear. 
what that word is. And so, um, and, and, you know, there's a handful of like back to brunchers, but they're really, they, they they're just a small handful, man. They're and, small. And, and I feel like we were saying this on the trail. It's like, look, you know, people have moments in their lives that just sort of jolt them awake, whatever it may be. And, and maybe it's like a combination of things. You know, I know for me, it was the Iraq war. Cause I was, you know, like, like, I mean, I, I was in high school and I wasn't really paying attention to politics. And then all of a sudden I was just like, why are my friends being sent to war in, in Iraq? Like Iraq didn't do nine 11. This is what I'm thinking because I'm not really paying attention yet. I don't really know much about the world yet. And I started learning a lot of things. I started learning about, uh, Oh, this is what we do. This is what the United States does. We shouldn't be over there. This is a bunch of lies. The Bush administration is uh, pretty messed up. And, uh, you know, people have those moments. And, and for a lot of people of all ages, but a lot of young people, especially Trump was that moment when mm -hmm. Trump got in. That was the moment where they just saw, they woke up. So now they're wide awake and they're seeing how it's not just Republicans. It's Democrats, too. Because Wall Street owns both teams and they're seeing, gee, just because you get a guy with a D next to his name in that that doesn't mean all the problems go away. In fact, he doesn't really want to do much about anything. Uh, so, yeah, we, we have there's a groundswell uh, of people who are fed up and justifiably so. So, yeah. And you can't sit there and and because especially, you know, younger people are so plugged into social media, they're not, they don't come home and watch CNN. You know, they don't watch the nine o'clock news or whatever, like my dad would, you know, that's how my dad did it. And, and, uh, he always did that because that's just how he grew up. Um, and so they're like, they might believe some narrative, but then they see this groundswell on social media saying other things and they go, oh, wow, wait a minute. Like, uh, because they grew up in the, you know, the anti-bullying thing and all, you know, like if somebody, you know, does something awful on social media, they really, they're, they're called out for it and they're held accountable for it. And so they're seeing this and then you can't deny, you know, they go on their Instagram and then they see all these people in their timeline at this pro Palestine rally in all these cities all over America. And they're like, wow, I, maybe I should be there. And they're hearing all these narratives that are getting shot down the whole, it's complicated. It's not complicated, you know, and, um, they're starting to wake up to this because, you know, I was, I was fed the like, yeah, Israel's not perfect, but Hamas is real. I mean, I was fed that I, I, I was never like that critical of Israel because I was told I shouldn't, you know, like it's just the terrorists or whatever. And now that I realize this and you see like Abby Martin's Gaza fights for freedom and, you know, you hear, uh, a lot of like Jewish Americans going, this ain't right. I mean, you know, Lee camp, Katie helper, these people are Jewish and they're like, this ain't right. When Bernie Sanders said, in the primary in, in 2019, when he did the Fox town hall and he said this numerous times, but he said this on a Fox town hall, he goes being critical of a right wing Israeli government is not anti-Semitic. Here's a Jewish man who had families that were in the Holocaust saying this. So it's like, it's like, yeah, you wait. Yeah, you're right. You can't just get, and you're not going to get shouted down as, oh, you're anti-Semitic or, oh, you don't, you're not Jewish and you get patted on the head. You don't get it. Like I've gotten that before. Like you, it's too complicated for you. You don't get it. And it's like, well, now that I've studied it, I go, no, I do get it. It's wrong. Yeah. It's apartheid and it's abuse. And I'm sorry, just like uh, the American government is, is, totally. is abuses people. Well, yeah. And, and I mean, I, I, I know Norman Finkelstein is another person who comes to me. I mean, that guy has been speaking about this stuff for years. And, and again, that he, he is Jewish. He lost family in the Holocaust. He lost his parents in the Holocaust. He's been, you know, doing this like he's had this message for uh, years and years and years and has put up with I can only imagine. And now, finally, after all this time, like like the world is catching up to him. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. The world is catching up to him. So how do you see this ceasefire? Oh, boy. Uh, yeah. That's a million dollar question, man. I mean, I mean, I. If I'm being honest, I, I don't see. I doubt they're going to stop anytime soon because no one's 
making those. I mean, they they pretty much told Biden they weren't really going to. Well, I the thing that's curious is is it sounds like Israel has agreed to it. I was literally looking at um I think it was Richard Medhurst. I'm going to look at it right now. Richard Medhurst who is Syrian mm -hmm. um and is following this quite closely on his Twitter timeline. Um he went well, I think even if they agree to it, it's it's only a matter of time. Yeah, he said, uh, breaking unconditional ceasefire between Hamas and the Israeli occupation to take effect at 2 a.m. local time. This was seven hours ago. So I, I guess it'll just be, let's hope it holds. Right. Oh, um, totally. I mean, I'm glad to hear that. And and I, I just. But yeah, I mean, Israel it's, has its. its Israel has a very itchy tr trigger finger and they act the same way that like a militarized police act. And, you know, someone throws a water bottle at a cop who's fully armed and it's not going to hurt them at all. And they go, oh, we had to, we had no choice. So it's like, someone's going to sneeze in Gaza and Israel's going to go up. Oh, they broke the ceasefire. And, you know, they're just looking for a reason because I truly believe. And if you watch Abby Martin's Gaza fights for freedom and, and you watch empire fire, she interviews people on the streets in Israel and they just, don't I don't know that they realize they're totally all like, yeah, totally okay with genocide. The Palestinians are less than human. We got to exterminate them. It's totally okay. And many people buy into that. They're like in a cult. And Netanyahu, I firmly believe his goal is to wipe them, kill them all. And he's yeah. looking for any excuse to do it and doesn't care. And as long as America keeps selling him weapons, which we just did today, we just agreed to it today. Um, and we could have stopped that. And of course, the dumb Democrats didn't. And then you've got shithead Republicans like Leslie Graham, uh, who's, you know, they're all those crazy, they're all for, you know, they're evangelicals who think that if they, the Jews occupy, you know, that area, then the second coming of Christ, they really believe that. So they're, they're insane. They're crazy people. Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Um, but I think the international pressure just has to stay on and it's really, um, to hold all of these people in Congress and the Senate accountable who allowed this weapon sale to happen and allow this $3 billion every year to go to Israel. They and did honestly, this. dude, that's all of them. I, yeah. I, I mean, I'm sorry. Like I can't, I mean, look, and, and I'm not trying, I mean, the entire government is to blame and I, and I can't, I mean, I was talking about this uh, on Jimmy's show yesterday. It, it's just, <sighs> no one can get a pass anymore mm -hmm. they, they, i mean this is just absolutely absurd this is just political theater just a total corporate coup and i mean we've really lost the plot big time and now's the time to take it back and each other is literally all we have you know and i'm sorry when politicians and it doesn't matter who they are and i'm not trying to say like that they're all exactly as bad or anything like that. But I am saying that it doesn't matter who's telling you this. If they say like, we're on the same team, like, no, we're not. That's just definitionally not the way it is. They're not. I mean, I said this on Jimmy's show yesterday, thinking like a politician is on your team and is just going to like work in your interest. That's like thinking uh, someone trying to sell you a car is on your team. Like, like, like they're not on your team. Like, like, like they're not like you don't hand. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with being a car salesperson. <laughs> I'm just saying when you're going to buy a car, you don't go up to some salesperson and go, I know you got my back. I know you're looking out for me. Here's my credit card. Just let me know how it goes. Politics is the same way. Uh, they're not on your team. They're playing for Team America. And Team America does some really shady shit. And, you know, whether they have good intentions or not, Team America does some shady shit. And so general strike, general yeah, strike. That, that's all we have. That's our only tool. Like that's it. Like that's it. Because in the toolkit of change, you have direct action, you have protests, you have strikes, and then you have politicians. But guess what? If the politicians have no incentive to do anything for you, they're not going to. It doesn't matter how many nice tweets they send. It doesn't matter uh, uh, how fun they are on Twitch. It doesn't matter. It doesn't <laughs> matter. It really doesn't. I'm sorry. It doesn't. Stop idolizing them. Stop worshiping them. Yeah. It's bizarre. It's bizarre. Other countries don't have it the way we do. They don't do that. No one's tuning into Boris Johnson's podcast in England. <laughs> 
It's not a thing. He doesn't even have one. I'm pretty sure. I, I, no, no one's, no one's tuning in to Putin's playground on the weekends. He doesn't have, <laughs> he doesn't have a video blog or anything like that. That's something bizarre that we do here in the United States. It's time for it to fucking stop. They're not your friends. They're not your friends. They're a tool for change at right. best. At best. At worst, they're a roadblock to change, and usually they're busy being those roadblocks. So, yeah, general strike. And in all sincere honesty, car salesmen are more honorable than politicians. <laughs> so, so like, <laughs> uh, they're more honorable than politicians. I mean, uh, yeah, that's that's insane. Um, Thanks for watching, everybody. Please hit the like button, the subscribe button. Go to patreon.com slash Graham Elwood and rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood where you can support the show. Also, I have a Bitcoin wallet, a Bitcoin cash wallet, and an Ethereum wallet in the show notes. We're taking cryptocurrency. I have a Coinbase affiliation link. We're going to be getting on some other exchanges. So that's how you support the show. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. YouTube is unsubscribing us at an alarming rate. I have a PayPal button at GrahamElwood.com. I even have a Venmo at Graham-Elwood. There's a lot of ways to support our show. We are getting crushed by YouTube. They're unsubs We've dipped under 73,000 subscribers because of YouTube. Thanks for supporting what we do.